take in I take immense pride to introduce to all of you Shobhana Balachandra ma'am. She is the youngest of the renowned trio sisters of Chennai. A seasoned and versatile artist, she is also recognized as a senior Bharatanatyam guru. One of the early disciples of the famous dance duo Dhananjayans, Shobhana ma'am has trained in the popular Kalakshetra style. She went on to complement this with an extensive study of Abhinaya under Padma Bhushan Kalanidhi Narayanan, also known as our dear Kalanidhi Mami. In her quest for all-round excellence, she underwent professional training in classical music as well as Natwanga. Her dedication to this art form is also evident by the fact that she opted for a career in performing and teaching this dance. The accolades and laurels she has won are so many that I might take an entire hour to speak about them. Hence, let me keep the introduction short so we get more time to hear from her. Today, she has kindly consented to delineate a varnam for us. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you uh, for that introduction. Namaskaram to all of you. It's a great pleasure to be here this evening. Actually, this was planned about three, four weeks back, but it, every time it kept getting postponed and uh, here we are finally. Thanks to Lavanya for uh, taking the trouble of organizing this. Um, this is my favorite topic, how to, you know, interpret a Varnam. Um, I'm sure all of you are uh, familiar with uh, what Varnams or Pada Varnams are. Uh, when it comes to Varnam, what does Varnam actually mean? The actual meaning of Varnam is called, is color. So why have they given a name like Varnam? <clears throat> I think it's because that this Varnam being the centerpiece of uh, uh, repertoire, Bhattanatyam repertoire, shows the various colors. It can bring out the colors, shades of emotions, and it's a complete piece by itself to be presented. One Varnam, is enough to prove your expertise or skill in this art form. Um, so Varnam, the color itself shows that it can bring out various shades of emotions. That's why it's Varnam. So when you talk about a Varnam, um, you normally when before this, actually it's uh, the whole uh, today's session, I have aimed it towards young choreographers who are trying to um, choreograph new pieces but sometimes they are lost because many times uh, yeah. my students have asked me um, what is it uh, we should do that uh, we can you know can make a varnam wholesome uh, how should we approach a varnam actually that is how should you approach a varnam all that i'm saying today is from my experience and there's no right and wrong it's all a very individual way of looking at Varnam and doing it the way you want. The first thing that one yeah. should do is um, look at the text of the Varnam. When I say text of the Varnam, it's not just read the first two la lines and start composing. No, that's not what it is. You have to read the text in its entirety from the first word to the last word you have to read it and understand so that you get to know what the poet has, um, what the poet is trying to tell us. So when you read the text completely, that's the first step. And the second step is to determine the Stai Baba of the Varnam. When I say Stai Baba, it doesn't mean immediately people start thinking, okay, the Varnam can be only in one mood. That's not so. Sai Baba means we have to find out whether the Varnam is in the Bhakti mode or is in the Shringara mode or is just talking about stories. Normally we see only either a Bhakti mode or a Shringara mode. Sometimes the Varnam will start with a uh, Bhakti mode. For example, Swami Nanunda Nadimai. I am sure all of you are aware of that Varnam. Swami Nanda Nadimai, Ulaga Mella Mariyume, if you read those two lines, you will only think that it's Bhakti. But as you start reading the text further, you will understand that it's Sringaram and not Bhakti. So that's what I mean uh, by saying the uh, Stai Baba. 
uh, we'll come to the uh, later to how we differentiate Anupalavi and Pallavi. So once you determine that whether it's Shringaram or um, Bhakti, then you start visualizing the one. See, the common question that people ask me, my students ask me is, in a Varnam, there are Jatis interspersed. So how do you maintain the mood of the Varnam? Okay, this question I had when I was younger. So I used to keep wondering, so by breaking it to the Jati, won't the emotion get broken? How do we deal with this? Then I understood that I have formed my own thing. It may be relevant to some of you, may not be relevant, but I am just sharing my experiences. When before starting a jati, we always do the tattu and go back. Okay? That is the point. You have to take that tattu to get out of the mood. And after you finish the jati, there is aridhi. So this ardi is the one where you get back into the mood. So getting out and getting back should be seamless. Because when you are, for example, when there is viraham, so much of viraham in the lines, and you go back and start doing the jati without getting out of the mood, and the jati is in third speed, it, it just doesn't gel, you see. You can't do viraha expression and do a jati in third speed. It's not possible. It doesn't look apt. So there is a process of getting out and getting into the mood. So this, I think maybe it was designed like that. You, you do the tattu, go back as you get out and get into it when you're doing the arati. So that is something that we have to work because uh, the varnam has to be presented as a whole number, as one person talking to a lord or a king and the uh, audience should understand that the person is in that frame where she is talking to the king or a god or whoever she is talking to. So it has to be a complete dialogue. The break in the dialogue is something that the audience will not understand. So this is one way of getting in and getting out of the mood. Yes, what is it? Did somebody ask me a question? Okay. So now, um, now we have now that uh, we have determined what the Stai Baba is and uh, whether it's Sringara model. And then normally, when you come to a Varnam, when you take these traditional Varnams, I'm talking about a traditional Varnam, there are a lot of new Varnams which I'm not going to uh, go into. I'm talking about traditional Varnams. Traditional Varnams, normally they are addressed to a king or to the deity, ruling deity of the temple. So when it's a ruling deity, for example, when you do a Shiva Varnam, every Shiva Varnam will look the same if you don't incorporate the special features of that particular deity to which the Varnam is addressed. Uh, the Varnam that I'm going to do today is uh, Tanjur Kotar Mohamane, which is on Tiruvaru Thyagesha. Okay? So each temple has its own story. Each king has something special. So before going into the choreographing the Varnam, we have to read the Stala Puranam or you have to read about the king to which the Varnam is addressed. So you get those special things. Otherwise, every Varnam addressed to any king will look the same. Every Varnam addressed to any god for Shiva, for example, will look the same. Or Krishna, Krishna will look the same, Mudra, this Mudra, all that will look the same. So how are you going to differentiate? So this is when the special stories associated with the temple should come in. So the next thing is you have to read and study about the Stala Purana or the particular king uh, about which the Varnam talks about. So by doing that, you will also understand the poet's intention when he wrote the Varnam on that particular or Lord, on the particular Lord, he would have incorporated many of the Stala Puranas and many of the specialities of that place on which he is writing. So by bringing in those stories, it will be relevant to the audience to know, actually, we will also talk about that Stala. Okay, that's very important because uh, as I told you, every Shiva Varnam will look the same otherwise. So today, um, 
I'm going to explain the Varnam, taking one Varnam as an example. Uh, it is in Bhairavi, in Rupa Kathalam. All of you, would, uh, it's a very, very popular Tanjur Kotra Varnam, Moha Manam. So let us go, normally in a Varnam, when we go to Pallavi, the Pallavi is divided into two halves. And the Anu Pallavi is divided into two halves. But there are some Varnams which don't offer you that thing of breaking the Pallavi. Because when you break the Pallavi, it won't make any sense. So there are some Varnams, but most of the Varnams, Pallavi is two lines divided into two, Anu Pallavi is divided into two. So this is how the normal uh, traditional Varnam is formatted. So when we take the Pallavi, for example, in this Bhairavi Varnam, Moha Mana Yen Meedil Ni in the Vedayil Moodi Seyalamo Yen Swami Metta. This is the Pallavi. So it is broken down as Moha Mana Yen Meedil Ni in the Vedayil. That is the first line. Second line becomes Moodi Seyalamo Yen Swami Metta. So when you take a line of the Varnam, you have to see what the key word is. Key word of this line. The key word here is Mohamana and in the Velayil. The in the Velayil becomes a secondary word supporting the Mohamana. Okay. So what is she talking? She is saying Mohamana for people who don't understand Tamil. Mohamana yen me I am so full of love, my Lord. Ni in the Velayil, this beautiful time of this time. Then it says, Modi Sayyalamo, why are you indifferent? My Lord, Metta, Lord of Modi Sayyalamo. Why are you being indifferent to me? This is it. So in Mohamana Yen Meedil Ni in the Velayil. So she is talking about her desire for the Lord. So the desire becomes the key word. So Mohamana becomes the key word. So we have to key the, keep the key word in mind and do Mohamana yen meedil ni in the velayil. If you continue doing only in the velayil, it won't make any sense. The in the velayil should support Mohamana. So what are the different hands that you can do? You can do, I am so full of love for you, my Lord. Mohamana yen meedil ni in the velayil. It can suppose ni. That is the, uh, and also one more thing is, every line has to be done in a padartha mode once. Whether it's a varnam or a padam or anything, the padartham should be done once to establish the words. That's when people learn. You can't go to, into interpretations in the first time. You have to do the padartham. Uh, so, mohamana yen meedil ni inda velayil. So, how can you show different mohamana? How do you interpret mohamana? First, you're so full of love. So then you say, the love that I cannot contain. Okay. Or you say, like the waves that cannot be put into a pot and the breeze that cannot be stopped, my love cannot be contained. One. I come rushing to you with, my, with love, my Lord, and then show shyness. And do in the Velayil. See in the Velayil. So in the Velayil, always the secondary word supports the main word. So idea is to find the key word for each line. So this is how you develop the line and interpret it in different ways. So when you are doing a Sanchari, what is the important thing that you should look at is Sanchari should support the mood and the key word of the line. Here Mohamana in my opinion is the key word and if Mohamana has to be supported, what kind of Sanchari can you do for Mohamana? You show how the Moham has affected you. That's oh. one way. Another way is to show the Moham that has hit you and how you start behaving. You can say the Manmada's arrow or you can say, I am all the time thinking of you my Lord. Whatever I look at, wherever I look, it's your face. When I look at water, I think of Ganga. When I look at the clouds, I think of your uh, hair. Or things like that associated with Moham. The Moham 
inside you how you interpret the moha this is something that you can do what i have done in this varnam for mohmana is she is so full of love so crazy that she starts dressing up like shiva she starts dressing up like shiva and she looks at herself in the mirror and starts dressing up she takes the snake and she puts the snake and then she believes that she is shiva and she starts walking on the road thinking that she is shiva okay and then people are laughing at her what is she said oh why why is everyone laughing why is, oh they are all happy and she blesses and she continues her journey thinking that shiva and she goes to the river she looks at her image in the river and thinks that this is shiva and she starts going towards the image try to touch the image and then it suddenly she realizes that this is herself dressed like shiva and the snake on her she throws the snake and she says this is how crazy i am it's so full of moham for me for you i am so crazily in love with you people have started mocking me people think that i am mad i've gone crazy so this is all because i am in so much in love with you so this is how you can develop this is one idea that i have done you each one has a way of looking at uh, uh, ideas differently this is just some of my ideas that i have put into the one so now when we come to the next uh, pallavi line second uh, line of the pallavi moodi seyalamo en sami metta so what do you think is the key word here modi modi seyalamo yeah so modi seyalamo en sam en sami becomes a secondary word metta is also secondary word supporting <coughs> modi so modi seyalamo all of you know what modi is you're being indifferent you're being angry why are you being angry with me why are you being indifferent to me i come to you with lot of love but you turn away from me so this modi seyalamo is a common thing that we do what kind of sancharis can we do for it actually i'm going to leave some of it uh, for the question answer session and i want some of you to come up with some sanchari ideas because i have found in many varnams um, that uh, the easiest word is taken as sanchari so when you say uh, in a padam varija uh, mukhi nivu vache velanu anukoni korikato Raja Gopala Swami. So she is saying, Bari Jamuki, the lotus-eyed, uh, lotus-faced girl is waiting for you. Oh God, Raja Gopala Swami, go to her. That is the thing. But <clears throat> the easiest thing will be to interpret Raja Gopala Swami because you can show various mudras of Raja Gopala or can show various leelas of Raja Gopala. But will it really suit? Will it really gel with the mood? No. So you have to do the girl. waiting or the anxiety or the love that she has those are the things that should be in like that in this and sami is a very um, common word and sami you can interpret in any way but i would think modi is what should be interpreted but this varnam is uh, actually quite straightforward and the secondary and uh, primary words are very clear in this varnam but not all varnams are like this for example in the sakhi varnam sakiye in the velayil jalam seyyade so what happens many people start describing sakhi beautiful sakhi this you have hair like uh, thing cloud like hair like cloud beautiful eyes they start describe the sakhi they by losing the essence of the uh, line so uh, so this varnam is very straightforward actually it's very easy to find the keyword primary word and the secondary word so here modi say i am going to leave the modi say elamo sanchari for the question answer session and uh, probably you can uh, somebody can tell me how to do the modi say elamo you can come up with various ideas that is one thing so when we go to okay normally in varnam the anupallavi talks about either the place or the lord himself okay it describes the place where the lord is or it describes the place where the king lives or the greatness of the king so anupallavi most of the varnams is like that in this anupallavi it says nagarigamana tirunagarin vasare vasare 
So this varnam is written on Tyagesha of Tiruvaru. Okay. So this Tyagesha of Tiruvaru has some special features. For example, he has Javandi earrings. And he has two crescent moons, which is a very special feature of Tyagesha. Okay. And Javandi. And then there's only this part of the lingam is seen in. And also in Tiruvaru, there's something called Ajaba Nadanam. Now I see that many temples are doing it. But in those days, Ajaba Nadanam was done only in Tiruvaru, where the uh, Swami, when taken in procession, he's thrown up and down and is, you know, it's like a frenzy. It's really like a frenzy dance where the uh, uh, palanquin is thrown up and down sideways and people are frenzy. That's a very special feature. Aja, it's called Ajaba Nadanam. So it is a very special feature of uh, uh, Tiruvaru. Today I also saw it in um, this place where they have this Nati Rangam has this. No? The, Krishna was also done that. But um, this was very special of Tiruvaru. So, Ajaba Nadam. So, here Nagari Gamana Tirunagari. It describes about the beauty of Tiruvaru. So, in this, you could probably say the beauty of the place and you could also uh, talk about the Ajaba Nadam. Okay. So, here the, this line only describes the place. Nagari Gamana Tirunagari in Basare. The one who resides in that beautiful place of Tiruvaru. So he talks only about the place. You can probably do a couple of hands showing the beauty of the place. You can show the beauty and the uh, fertility of the place. You can show beautiful buildings. You can show beautiful structures. And then when you are doing um, Sanchari, you could probably do Ajaba Nadana because it's very, very special to Tiruvaru. So that is why when I say that you have to read the Stala Purana or the history of the temple um, so that you can incorporate these things in your Varnam, in your choreography. So Akka, the second... I have a doubt. Uh, can yes. I ask you? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, Akka, I am Lakshmi. So you, you said um, this Varnam is on Tyagesha. So yeah. how did you find out, Akka, which word uh, tells you that uh, uh, that it is Tyagesha? Yeah, yeah, I'm coming to that. Next, Anupallavila, Boga Tyagesha. Anuboga. Oh. But when you read the entire Varnam, you know it is on Tiruvaru. That's why you have to read the Varnam completely, understand the text, and then find out what Varnam, where it was written and which century, where it which uh, Lord is addressed and all that. It says Tyagesha, but Tyagesha is again a common name. Tyagesha mm -hmm. is a name for Nataraja, for Shiva. So this Varnam is particularly on Tiruvaru. This is only with reading the text that we find out that it's from the particular. For example, Sakye Varnam is on Rajagopala Swami in Mannakuri. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes. it's, it's not just one Rajagopala Swami, it's Rajagopala Swami of Mannarkuri. Mm -hmm. So Mannarkuri has certain uh, special features where the when the procession of Krishna goes, they throw the butter on the Krishna as the Krishna goes on procession. So those are the special things of Mannarkuri, which can be incorporated to show that it is from Mannarkuri. So, uh, so here it is on Tiruvaru. So Tyagesha comes in the next line. So Thank you. When, yeah. Thanks, Lakshmi. So uh, when you're talking about the place, you can talk about all this. You can talk about people who have gone to Tiruvaru can also incorporate some of the Tiruvaru temple architecture, which has some special features. You can look at it and... But it's not always possible to, before choreographing a varnam, to go to the temple. But uh, I took the opportunity before choreographing this varnam to go to Tiruvaru. And also Sakhi varnam, I have learned it from my gurus. Uh, but I was never convinced that um, it was just, just Krishna. So I had to go and see Manarkudi to find out how different Krishna is. For example, in that Manarkudi, Krishna has a um, um, calf and a cow standing beside him and he has this stick in his hand, a golden stick for the cows. So that's what he's holding. He's not just Krishna. He's holding the calf and he's having the stick in his hand. So these are the things then I incorporated after going to Manarkuri. So that's something that uh, the dancer should take uh, trouble to find out. What the um, what the god what god what stala purana it has. Okay. 
So in Nagari Gamana, as I told you, you could do Ajhabanadnam. Or there's a story of Mochikunda who took the lingam from Indra and installed it in uh, uh, Thiruvaru. That story also can be done. But somehow, for me, it's my personal feeling. Um, if you do too many of those stories, it will detract you from the mood of Shringara. So in the Shringara Varnam, I choose to keep the stories to the minimum because then it becomes a storytelling thing taking you away from the Shringara mood. So of course some things will have to say, some birds specifically say that this is it, then you can do it. But uh, not going overboard on stories of Tyagesha or stories of Tiruvaru that can really take you out of the Sthai Baba. Uh, again, this is my personal opinion. Uh, and uh, there's no right and wrong. I feel I don't get the connection if I start doing stories in a Shringaravan. So I avoid stories in a Shringaravan. Whatever Sanchari, it is woven around the Shringaram base, not detracting too much from the uh, base of Shringaram. So we are coming to Boga Tyagesha, second line of Anu. Boga Tyagesha Anubogam Seya Kitteva. Boga Tyagesha is the intoxicating Tyagesha. Anubogam Seya means to be together with me. Kitte, come, come close to me. To be together with me. Boga Tyaga or the intoxicating Tyagesha. So here, Boga Tyagesha itself shows that he is intoxicating to our eyes. The moment you see Tyagesha, it is intoxicating. Such is his beauty that she's intoxicated and she's fallen in love with me. Mohamana again, it goes into Mohamana. You see, after Boga Tyagesha. That's the connection. So Boga Tyagesha is at least few lines, a few times you have to do Boga Tyagesha or the one who intoxicate. Um, it is also, there's also Soma Skandan here in uh, uh, Thiruvaru, it's very famous, Soma Skandan. So that you can show, that is uh, Kamalamba and the Tyagesha and in between is uh, Muruga. So that that hand you can just show as Soma Skandan. In a passing reference you can do that. So Kamalamba has, when you see Kamalamba, she has a special way of holding, it's a special way of holding Kamalamba, where she lifts her right leg, her body is uh, her uh, Body is turned that way, a torso is turned to the side. So the leg is lifted on the right side and then like this I can show you. Actually Kamalamba stands like this way and then her body is like this. So that's very special of Kamalamba. You go there, you see Kamalamba is like that, you know. So her torso is turned. Her, um, lower half is turned to one side. So those are the special things that you can incorporate and show. Boga Tyage in Tyagesha. Tyagesha was also part of Kamalamba is also part of Thiruvaru. So you can show Kamalamba, uh, Tyagesha and uh, Muruga, Somaskanda. So Boga Tyagesha, Boga is the you know, key word in my opinion. Okay. The one who intoxicate, the one who gives us that Bogam. So, um, various types of Bogam you can use. Here, uh, metaphors and similes give you a big helping hand. So, when you say Bogam, you can only show Bogam like this, Bogam like this. How else can you show? If you show this, it is also we are using the same mudra for Moham. So, how else can you show Bogam? Bogam is intoxication. So what happens, you can use metaphors like the, the peacock when it sees the cloud, what happens, it's actually intoxicated. When the moon rises on a high tide, moon rises. So you can say when I see you, when I see your form, I am like a peacock to the clouds. When I think of you, when I just think of you, my heart rises like the waves to the moon. When I just show your name, I am like a flower to the sun. So I am like a flower waiting, Tyagesha. You come as a bee to me. Anubogam seya. 
அனுபோகம் செய்ய கிட்டேவா ஸோ கம் ஐ எம் லைக் அ ஃப்ளவர் வெயிட்டிங் ஃபார் யூ கம் டு மீ லைக் அ பீ ஸோ தீஸ் ஆர் சம் ஆஃப் த மெட்டர்ஸ் அண்ட் சிம்பிளீஸ் யூ கேன் யூஸ் டு ஷோ போகம் அண்ட் அனுபோகம் போகம் இஸ் இன்டாக்சிகேஷன் அனுபோகம் இஸ் டு பீ டுகெதர் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் ஹவு த பல்லவி அண்ட் அனு பல்லவி அஸ் ஸோ வென் யூ கம் டு சிட்டஸ்வரம் சிட்டஸ்வரம் எனக்கு கம் டு சிட்டஸ்வரம் ஜென்ரலி சிட்டஸ்வரம் தெர் இஸ் ஸ்வரம் அண்ட் தெர் இஸ் ஓன்லி பதார்த்தம் தட் யூ கோ இந்த கேஸ் சொந்தமுடன் என்னை கூடின விந்தனை நினைந்தே தினம் வாடி மனம் நாடி உனை தேடி உறவாட ஐல் டெல் யூ த மீனிங் மிகவும் எனது உடல் பதறுது இனி அரை நிமிடமும் யுகமாகுதே அதர சாரம் அது தர இதே சமயம் சரச சத்குணமே ஸோ நாம் யூ கண்டு ஓன்லி பதார்த்தம் வித் அ லிட்டில் சேஞ்ச் இந்த பிகாஸ் ஷேர் இன் சிட்டஸ்வரம் சாகித்யம் யூ கான் கோ ஆன் எலாபரேட் யூ ஷுட் நோ வே டு எலாபரேட் அண்ட் வே நாட் டு எலாபரேட் திஸ் இஸ் ஜஸ்ட் அ டைரக்ட் ஹேண்ட் யூ கேன் யூஸ் ஜஸ்ட் ஒன் த மூடன் ஃபஸ்ட் டைம் இஃப் யூ டூ டூ திஸ் யூ கேன் டூ செகண்ட் டைம் லைக் தட்ஸ் த ஓன்லி டிஃப்ரென்ஸ் யூ கேன் ஷோ அண்ட் இட்ஸ் பெட்டர் டு ஸ்டிக் டு த வேர்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் டூ பதார்த்தம் ஃபார் சிட்டஸ்வரம் so now when we talk about the first half for actually first half of the varnam is complete by itself you don't need the second half to bring the mood because every, every, all the moods have come in mogam has come if you show shown modi you shown the beauty of the place you shown the beauty of tyagesha and you also show show your longing when you come to the second half second half in my opinion should be should not be very elaborate all the elaboration and sanchari should be done in the first half second half should be crisp because once you start expanding the second half how long are you going to do it today uh, the audience um, tolerance level is only 1 hour 1 hour 10 minutes you see audience getting up and going and then if that in that one hour if you are going to do for 45 minutes varnam nobody is going to watch you so you also have to see the audience pulse today's uh, pulse or uh, today's uh, scenario is different when when we were younger performing we had performances for 2 and 1/2 hours but today nobody wants to do to watch a 2 and 1/2 hour performance the maximum they wa- watch is 1 and 1/2 hours maximum after that they are restless we call it in chennai we call it 8 o'clock syndrome the moment you the clock strikes 8 people will start leaving i mean we are seeing it day in and day out people don't want to stay beyond 8 so it's better that you make the varnam crisp and uh, second half make it very contained and not uh, elaborate on the second half so as we did uh, first first half various okay i will throw open question and ask you to come up with ideas of uh, how you elaborate the sancharis anybody can come up with some ideas we can have some fresher ideas also from uh, youngsters and people who want to give now when we come to the charanam it says maran kanegal thuburan saramariyai the cupid is th- throwing arrows saramariyai so many arrows are coming like so here you can either do simple maran hands or you can show the five arrows of panmata what are the five arrows do you know the five arrows and where they hit you so what i have done here is i've shown four hands of maran striking and with every swaram with the ending i have shown hitting the so, um, um, flower hitting a different part here the white lotus hits you on the chest okay in your heart then it is the ashoka which hits you on the lips and then the eyes and then the head four the last neeloth blue lotus will kill you so every time you finish ma kanigathuran once here once here once here and ones on the head so you can use that uh, as your aradis to show the difference instead of doing just aradi like this you can show 
uh, the different arrows hitting you and the different love or different flowers hitting you differently or you could choose to incorporate all the five, five flowers in Naran Kanegal also but if you do that you come to the last flower you are already dead so how are you going to do the next chasvarams one blue lotus hits you you are dead so then going to the next swaram is, will not be relevant so we can probably go with the intensity you know, try to increase the intensity as you go towards it normally the last swaram uh, is more uh, very descriptive so we can leave that out for the intensity but for the first three swarams you can use the intensity of the love and then despair and then you know really going mad and then you can come back to your normal self but uh, if you want to use all the five uh, arrows in the charanam maran kanegal also you can use that's up to you i mean you could use it but i would think that uh, using the blue lotus and dying in the first line of the charanam then i feel it's it doesn't gel well to come back and say okay after the charanam um, we come to the swarams and sahityam maveri kuyilgal kuvude ini en seiguve so here it just says those cuckoo birds are uh, singing they are singing but it is it hurts my ears because you are alone so you could actually talk to the cuckoo bird okay you hear the cuckoo bird and say are you shouting why are you shouting my um, dear bird don't shout you are also alone no like me don't shout and then suddenly you see another two cuckoo birds in love and you then don't want to see it you close the door so that kind of differences you can although i do only two hands for this you can show difference like you can connect the hands you can say oh so why are you shouting don't shout i know you're alone like me but don't shout it's troubling me and then then you look at the two birds and saying those two are together but i am alone and just close the door so you can do a connected hands two hands can be connected in some way for all the thing that can be done and then uh, the next swaram talks about marudam oru puram veesudu iravinil um tamasam yene anaiva iniyal so come quickly the marudam sure she is happy she says the marudam the cool breeze it's so wonderful it's such a beautiful time don't delay come quickly to me sure she doesn't go to viragam so here the uh, moods are kind of uh, not following a cycle so as i say the flower when you are using the flower you can use appropriate flower depending on what line you are using okay so because it doesn't follow that order so he says this beautiful cool breeze isn't it the right time for you to come and be with me together so that is uh, one the next one says soman tanal migu soriye rama ini saki yenara kaman kalavi sisekka then the swami sthana madu vimal sure she shows viragam she says the moon is like giving me a lot of heat in my body i'm suffering the viraha rama ini saki enna rama means it's not show rama rama is a yo rama shiva shiva like that okay so so mantanal miga soriya il rama ini saki enada ma man kalavi isaika enasta nasta namadu vimudada my breasts are suffering because of the uh, separation from you okay in some of the tanjur quarter varnam older varnam the swarams have some very very erotic uh, words which cannot be actually done it will not look good when you do those erotic things in those cases you just take out the essence of the line and do the essence instead of actually word to word so if it's too erotic and talks about very uh, sensitive things which cannot be actually shown in a uh, appropriate way you just take out the essence 
Like for example, when you say so mantanal mega so ega ilama ini sakiye nana ka kalabisi sakiye sa mista nama de bimu. That's enough. You don't have to show anything else. So like that, you have to be a little discreet in uh, doing. Most of the um, oh, traditional varnams have uh, the last swarams and all have very very erotic words, which is very difficult to actually interpret and do. It may it is a very thin line. It's it becomes vulgar when you start interpreting those things. So you just take out the essence of those things and or the last swaram can just go as swaram instead of words. If if it cannot be done um, with taking just the essence, then you just have to uh, cut off the saitem and do only the swarams. These are um, liberties as an artist you could take if you're not comfortable doing something because ultimately you have to communicate to the audience first of what you think but if you're not comfortable doing that then the whole purpose is lost um so there's one in um, all the varnam there are swarams which talk about the greatness of the lord also here for example in this the fourth swaram says sureshan anudinam pugal varesha munivar paniyum jagadisha Aganda Purana Nivasa Adivark Adil Puryum Isha. So it goes on describing the Isha, the greatness of the Isha. So that can be just done as Padartam and finished it off. So when we're talking in second half, what I normally do for the Swarams is try and incorporate little bit when you're doing the Swaram as an Adavu, try and incorporate little bit of the Sahityam in your Swarams itself or little bit the mood of the Sahityam in the Swaram when you are choreographing instead of doing just plain Tate Taha and all that suppose it's um, a lot of Moham so you could do things like this this all this Adavas things Adavas can also be incorporated showing the mood um, when it's viraham, you can also do slower steps to show a little bit of viraham. I'm, I'm not saying that you should do viraham in the swaram, but you can show, uh, or you can use adavas which are a little more relevant to the mood that was going to fall. So this is something that I have followed in all the varnams that I've choreographed. So this is that's how we approach a varnam. Again, it is. Um, each one's individual um, thinking to approach the varnam. You can do it anyway. Sancharis has left to you. There's the imagination of the dancer, the choreographer to interpret the varnam in the way he or she chooses to. Okay. But the points to be noted is varnam from the beginning to the end has to be made one wholesome piece where a dancer is trying to communicate to the Lord about her desire or about her viragam. That threat should not be lost. The flow of from one line to another should not be lost. Sometimes you get so lost in the intricacies of uh, the core ways, suddenly you are lost, you don't even know what you are doing next. So even if you know, suppose there's an intricate adabu and so much of rhythm and all that with Tishram, Mishram, all those things, the audience get detracted from the mood and they're concentrating on the japis. And then for them to come back, it's going to take a while. Um, so it is up to you to bring back the mood. That's why I said the connection is very important when you're choreographing a one. So these are some of the pointers I have uh, put across to you. Now I'm open to question answer session if there are any. Friends, you can unmute yourself and you can ask your questions, please. Namaskaram Akka. Namaskaram Minita. 
Yeah, uh, okay, I was just wondering now, you said if you're uncomfortable with any, you know, the Sahitya. I can't hear you, Vinita. Hello. Breaking. Um, Hello, yeah. Can you hear me yeah. now, Akhi? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 You were telling about the, the Charanam, like, you know, when yeah. if there is the lyrics are not uh, comfortable, you know, we can avoid doing that. So yes. I just wanted to ask you, uh, in case uh, I find it difficult to do a car, like I, you know, I want to take just three charanams. Is it okay? Can I just, you know, um, avoid any one charanam as per my wish or would it really, uh, you know, affect the pattern? No, it won't affect the pattern. You could do it. It's not that we do all the charanams all the time, charms, um, swarams all the time. and charms, I think. You can avoid it. It's, it's not uh, something that's not done. Okay. Another question, Akka. Uh, since, uh, you know, the Nayaka is uh, usually, you said, in traditional compositions, the name of the, uh, you know, Nayaka or the deity comes in the Anupallavi. So, uh, yeah. how is it? Uh, because uh, this is like a new information to me. I've heard this, but uh, so is it better to reveal them in the Anupallavi or is it okay to, you know, show, like if I'm talking about Shiva, uh, mm -hmm. Is it right if I show him in the Pallavi itself or you think it's better to, you know, reveal him in the Anupallavi? It's not a question of revealing, but in Pallavi, does the bird say that, Tyagesha, how will you show? Okay. The birds no, don't only, say out. Okay, if it's only that I, I, I'm in love with this particular deity, uh, you it know, if I want... just says, for, the, for example, in this Varnam, it says, Mogamane en meedil in the Vedigil, Modi seyyalamo en sami. So you're showing this. There, if you start showing Tyagesha and all that, then when you actually come to Tyagesha, what will you show? It will be a repetition, no? So, um, there should not be repetitive uh, mudras and all that. It will be boring. It's not about revealing. It's whether the birds uh, uh, call for it. If the birds in the first uh, Pallavi itself talks about Tyagesha, then you show Tyagesha. And it doesn't talk, talk about Tyagesha, don't show Tyagesha. Okay, thank you, thank you, Akka. <clears throat> Ma'am, you you said we have we are open to do the modi say elagumo, right? Yeah. From the moment you said to my that little brain, only one modi say elagumo is coming, and I'm stuck there. What happens when a dancer or a choreographer gets stuck? <laughs> Watch movies. <laughs> Thank you. No, there are so many ways of doing Modi. Yeah. Um, you can just <coughs> you try talking to him, he turns away. Okay, you try going near him, he turns away. Modi. Okay. So there are various ways of Modi. It's not just anger; it's also indifference. And then you look at her and behave as if you've not looked at her. So. Actually, movies offer you a lot of uh, variety and layers that you can layer your dance when you watch movies. That's a good movie. Yeah. Akka, also in the same connection, uh, we also tend to connect the the verses, right? We will mm -hmm. take it from there. The emotion that we show in Mohamana will carry us forward for, you know, to say that you know, to say that, have you not uh, seen my state? And up to you, you're turning your face. No, you, you tend to develop there from the first line also, isn't it? It's not like as if you do the first line and then you don't connect it to the second. No, it has to be connected. That's what I'm has saying. To be connected. It has to be connected. So we'll build it on the basis of the first line. Yeah, so when you finish the jati after the mohamana, that they go into ardi, and then you, it goes as mohamana only. But some people start the second line, on the uh, second line of the pallavi. You need not. You can do mohamana, mohamana, yen mid me yen te. It is a connected line only. We have Pallavi broken it as yeah. Pallavi two lines and Anupallavi two lines. 
Uh, I have one question. Yeah. Who's uh, this? I can't say. I'm Utyo. Ah, Utyo, okay. <laughs> yeah, tell me. Okay. Tell me, Utyo. Uh, for our sensory part, uh, uh -huh. if I will have idea, maybe uh, more than one sensor, can we do that? Or it's too boring or too lengthy? See, again, Sanchari, I would say one Sanchari is more than enough. By making it two Sancharis, you're unnecessarily uh, lengthening the Varnam for no reason. You do another Varnam with that Sanchari, that's all. Another question is, uh, is there any uh, rules like this many variation I can do, and then after the Sanchari, like four variation or five variation, and then you will do Sanchari. Like that, anything is <laughs> particular piece. No, no, I didn't, I didn't get your question with like, you. That line, uh, suppose uh -huh. uh, the Modi say, say uh -huh. almost Swami, and the line uh -huh. is maybe two variation or four variation, first thing and then sunshine. Is that that variation things is uh, like fixed? It? Like this is maybe three, four, not too many. Uh, no, you can do as many because you can also do without a sunshine. Okay. You can do a 10 different interpretation of Modi Seilamo without a Sanchari. It's entirely left to you. I have seen Varnams being done without Sancharis. Just five, for example, what Sanchari does our Rupa Mujuchi have? See? So it can be done without Sanchari. Sanchari is. Um, if you want to expand on one word and work around that word, that's when the sanchari comes. But if you feel there is no scope for expanding any word, you need not do a sanchari. It entirely depends on what line you're looking at for sanchari. Okay, I have one more question for you, Lakshmi, again. Yeah, Lakshmi. Yeah. So... Uh, you are saying we there is layering of uh, uh, interpretation. So yes. in the Mohamana Varnam, uh, how you will... Uh, so when you are saying layering, it is increasing in the intensity of uh, how you show your love. Ah, is it see, like that? Intensity, that's what I am saying. See, when you start the Varnam, you are only saying Mohamana. We should not start the Varnam on high intensity because then the entire Varnam will be that high intensity. It, like it just goes out of your head. The intensity should increase. Yeah. As the, so I, when I'm talking of layering, it's not intensity I'm talking about. Intensity is a different uh, thing. Intensity is with the line, as the line moves, as the Varnam moves, the intensity should move accordingly to the line and according to the words okay so uh, that is the intensity but layering is uh, in the same line modi seyalamo for example mohamana itself when you show mohamana you're just instead of showing plain mohamana mohamana i gave you some examples no can you contain mm -hmm. the river in a pot can you stop the breeze from coming so is my thing and then when you finish it Layering is, I'll show you one small example. I'll do the same example. See, you're just doing this. Okay, I can't contain my love. Don't you understand my law? See, I'm showing so much of love. So layering means Beautiful. doing not the words, but beyond the words. A subtext. Mm. Mohamana is the text. Subtext is adding little more. Like you add uh, curry leaves, no? <laughs> Favorite of food. It's like that. Yeah. <laughs> Main thing okay. is for, for sambar, what do you do? Main thing is parupu, no? But uh -huh. when you... When you're making sambar, you add a lot of other things to flavor it. That's right. what I mean by layering. Layer. You know? Okay, understood. It is not plain word to word, but 
adding little more to the words beyond the words around the words you layer it with little more of your little emotions and little okay. live movements and all that got it akka thank you namaste akka yes yes ranbir yeah uh, i have two questions basically first one is uh, did you see any difference between the varnam compositions in different vanis not really ranbir okay it's almost the same Bani, according to me there are only two banis one good style and bad style okay bani doesn't make a difference in your approach to the varnam or in your approach to your uh, uh, abhinayam so i have doesn't one more of a small question that is uh, from your own experience akka uh, did you see any difference matlab what is the difference according to you between the dhananjan sir and the kalanidhi ma'am is uh, abhinayam the way of approach in a very structural way matlab we see the difference as a normal audience but in a very structural oh, way okay as an audience what do you feel a uh, kalakshetra abhinayam and kalanidhi ma'am is abhinayam what is it as audience it's more structural like uh, it's not uh, not that much very they are not using that much very practical things or they're not uh, very natural way of acting it's more uh, like uh, natya so, dharmi type of acting i will tell you in i see in some styles i don't even want to mention kalakshetra style dhananjan style some style abhinaya is very structured so what happens is they do word to word padartha it's only padartha abhinaya okay so word to word so mohamana will be done once like this once like this once like this so it is only the um, um, uh, the mudras that are different whereas the mohamana is the same okay whereas when we learned from mami that's what lakshmi asked a question about layering that's what i said layering mohamana is mohamana but how do you layer mohamana showing different mohamana so when we learned with mami we were uh, taught to think it's what that mami taught us in each and every line we were made to think differently each line can be interpreted the same line can be interpreted a million times in million ways emotions are the so many shades of shringara so if you can bring in the shades of shringara in mohamana mohamana is love isn't it but love there are so many shades there are intense love there is uh, playful love there is sad love there are so many ways that love can come out there is intoxicating love so those are the layers that we were um, taught to think but having said that um, the styles that have structured abhinaya is required for people doing arangetram level okay you cannot let them do layers because they won't know what to do if you say layer they won't know how to layer it how will they layer it for students when they are going on on a small level when they are just going the arangetram or just finished arangetram they need that structure okay and after some time when you start growing up as an artist within the framework you start layering and like it's like a painting any painter here if you've seen painters work it's not when you see blue as a final output it's not just blue that they are using there very shades of colors that they do and then they bring out that blue okay dancing is like that it's not one blue one green one red no you have to add so many shades to bring out that desired blue or desired green so it's the same in dancing also oh, yes. thank you thank you thank you ekka any other questions anybody uh akka varsha here yeah varsha yeah akka uh, just uh, it's a general question like uh, what's your tip for holding on to this thai bhava when doing a jati akka like in especially in the first half no i said you cannot hold the bhavam for the jati that's what i say so you have to i the my point i made was after you finish you have to come out 
and go back into the mood come out of the mood to do the jati and go back into the mood and so that has to be seamless like it happens naturally because if you don't come out at the right time then this it will seep into your jatis the mood will seep into your jatis which is not okay for me adava should not be done with any uh, abhinem adava has its own abhinem okay i'm not saying adava is without abhinem adava has its own body um, what do you say angika abhinem okay but to bring in the mood of the song into the jati is not okay it will not be relevant but in chitta swaram like in the swaram nritta part it's okay akka we sometimes try to incorporate like that no yeah that's what i said in second half swaram scan incorporate little bit of your but in a jati it's fully jati no swarams are only one two times jati is like one and a half minutes you do a jati you can't uh, let the um, mood seep in to the jati okay then what would be your thought process for selecting a jati akka in the first half ipo uh, it should be up, like suitable for the i mean i understand that the mood should not seep in uh, but the yeah. way it comes together ipo pallavi pannite apra jati pannum bodu if you are it can't be some uh, what to say uh, uh, firecracker jati also right like how do you uh, no varsha the jatis can be any way that's why i'm saying you should come out and go into the mood that is the point i made you have to come out and go into the mood see personally for me um jati should be there complexity should be there but uh, it cannot overpower the dancing okay it cannot okay. overpower the other things it cannot be overwhelming jatis cannot be overwhelming so overwhelming that it you know the entire thing is forgotten and the jati is like a cracker jati on stage that is something that i won't do but there are people who are doing it it's not wrong there's nothing right or wrong in it okay akka namaskaram sujata here for the modi modi sayya on the line la can we elaborate on the in the velayil in this beautiful moonlight uh, time you are turning your face is that okay to elaborate there in the velayil comes in the first one no first line oh okay okay ne Mm. Okay. you can probably use in the value see look how beautiful why are you doing this but why you can enter because the in the value comes the previous line okay. although it's part of the same line we are breaking the line isn't it so you can't do in the value here you can't in the value okay i mean you can't elaborate on in the value here you could yeah. add a little bit of in the value for modi but uh, not to elaborate it because it's actually part of the first line okay because first line i think the elaboration is more on the mohamana so the in the yeah. valley mood can be can be um, made relevant maybe in the second line because you know you could say that you're turning your face in this beautiful time as a sanchari movie is that okay yeah the, see that's what i said the key word is what you have to decide in my opinion key word is modi modi so you are doing modi when i am so full of love this time you are doing modi but this time doesn't actually say this beautiful time we are only interpreting it as beautiful time the time when i am so full of love you are doing modi you are good okay okay so in the valley is just a, a connection connection but, okay but having said that you could say look how beautiful how beautiful this time is and why should you do this modi you could do it you could do that but not go into lens to elaborate it like with moon and cool breeze and all that not required here okay akka utyo here ya utyo just now uh, i was asking you know that um, first line and second line uh, can we not can we uh, keep like that for varna It's a, like a means like Pallavi, and the end line le will split it instead of only one. Can we do? It can be done because it's one line only. We are splitting into two. 
it's not necessary that every time we have to split two. It is not, but see, imagine the length of the line, yeah, it becomes too much, no? Okay. So there are too many. Now, if you take both the lines together, take both the lines together. Open out. Take both the lines. So, Mokamana yen meedil in the velagil, Modi sayyalamo yen sami metta. So, there is Mokamana, there is in the velagil, there is Modi. So, which one will you elaborate? It will be cluttered with so many hands, no? By doing two lines together. But some Varnams call for uh, combining together. Because if you cut it in the middle, it doesn't make any sense. So in those cases, you can have you to give combine. an example, Akka? Um, Akka, can you give an example? Yeah, yeah, such yeah. A mayaladira. I don't remember the words. In A mayaladira. A mayaladira. That's okay. Money both. See the low, I don't remember the words exactly. But uh, here, when they cut the line, it doesn't make any sense. Um, Sakhi in the Zalam, Yenadi. Adil character than a katairke. Full line verdile. Clear. That two Pallavis and two Anupallavis, yeah. Sakhi in the Jalam, Yenadi. The line Pallavi itself was long, so it is cut into two. And then it has to be cut like Nati Mogam. Okay, Nati Mogam, what has happened is Ati Mogam Kundin Mani. Okay, um, Ati Mogam Kundin Mani. There, second Pallavi, second line is only Antaranga Maitani. Only Antaranga Maitani. Only secretly. Ayeet Kodi Vadi. That's full line. Okay. That is Pallavi. Antarangamaitani becomes the second half of the Pallavi. So it is cut very unevenly. But that's what makes sense. When we talk in about Chalamela, yeah, Is Chalamela also like that? Akka? Pallavi is cut into two. Chalamela J Sevai. I think so. I'm not, I haven't done that Parnam. I've only heard that Parnam. Yeah. Normally it's one Pallavi and one Manapallavi, no? But we do four lines. How? We cut the Pallavi into half, Manapallavi into half. Appropriately so that it makes sense. Yeah. There's no hard and fast. Actually, there's no hard and fast rule that you have to do it like this. It can be done together also. As Maybe so, the columns also have a, have something to say, Akka, because in the case of Chalamelara, yeah, mm -hmm. is it ad, Aditala? Uh, ad no, Chalamelara is Aditala. Adi, Adi yeah. So maybe if it's a Rupaka Tala Varnam, then um, uh, you'll have to sing both the lines together. Will it be no. like that? No, Mohamana is Rupaka Tala. Okay. Mohamana is Rupaka Tala. It actually, the cutting of the line gives ease for communication. The communication is clearer when you cut the line into half and concentrate on one aspect of the line and go into the second aspect. For okay. example, in Chinni Krishna Varnam, Anupallavi cannot be cut. Chinni Krishna Varnam, the Natana Varnam. Anupallavi is only one, whereas Pallavi is two. Because Anupallavi yeah. cannot be cut because it won't make sense. Mm. Okay. So sometimes it happens like that depends on the uh, Varnam formation, how they have done it. If it can be cut, it is cut. If it cannot be cut, it won't be cut. For example, in Nandagopalane, Nandagopal Periyasami Turan Varnam, there is only one Pallavi and one Anupalavi. Because it cannot be cut. Nandagopalani chindeka vandabani is half Pallavi. What is it? Nandagopalani chindeka vandabani. You can't do anything in that. In the Veda yil varasoladi. So you have to combine and only do Nandagopalani. So some varnams you cannot cut. In that case, we have to do it fully. Even in Mate, it's like that. No Mate Malay Twacha. One Pallavi and one Nanpallavi. 
because it is incapable of being. Mate malaya dwaja. Can you cut like that? What does it mean? Does it make any sense? So you have to complete the line. So in some cases you can't cut, some cases you can cut. Akka? Yeah? Yeah, Vidya here. Yeah, Vidya. Uh, yeah. Akka, uh, you know, what, uh, how does the treatment, you know, if you're taking a string, uh, this Varnam that we have taken, which is a Shringara based Varnam. Yeah. Uh, what is the influence of the Nayaka that we are talking about? So there is, if you take Krishna as the Nayaka or Shiva mm -hmm. as the Nayaka, does it affect the uh, depth of treatment of Shringara in the Varnam? Definitely. For Krishna, as you know, Krishna can be treated any which way. Right, right. Krishna is a playboy. Krishna is your friend. Krishna is your lover. Krishna is your child. Krishna can be treated any way. Whereas right. when you do Shiva, you cannot treat him like Krishna. Exactly. So, even if I have to take the Nayika who comes into picture for a Varnam where Nayika is Shiva. Yeah. Most of the time we see that it reaches a pinnacle of bhakti. That is some kind of realization. Even if you take Teruvilvara no Padam that we do, it somehow leads to from romanticizing somewhere, it, you know, it can cross over and, uh, you know, go, go into a realization time. So, uh, so that was my doubt. Whether if it is Shiva, does it have to always cross over or does it no. have to touch that point? Or we can no, still leave it, it at uh, Shringara. You can leave it at Shringaram, but you cannot have playful Shringaram with Shiva. Exactly. Right, right, right. But it can still be Shringaram based. Mohamana is completely Shringaram. There is no bhakti in that. Correct. No, uh, no. I mean, what I was trying to understand is because the kind of Nayaka that Shiva is and the kind of Nayaka that Krishna is, everybody can be a Gopika. Every dancer can become a Gopika. She did not. Uh, manifest herself as Radha for it. Even yeah. just as a, a Gopika, she can manifest herself. But what yeah. is the what? What about the Nayika who is in love with Shiva? How does she manifest herself? I mean, till what level can she manifest herself? See, Shringaram is Shringaram. As I said, uh, when you when see when you're doing Ashtapatis as Radha, I'm just taking a small leg. When you do Ashtapatis as Radha. Radha can treat Krishna any way. You know, she can be angry with him, she can shout at him, throw him out, uh, be, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, all kinds of things she can do with Krishna. Whereas when, when we are talking about Shiva, Shiva, you know, is an aesthetic and is in a higher level. And then you show Sringaram as your Sringaram, but cutting out the playfulness subtle. of Krishna. Yeah, subtle. The subtlety has to be maintained. Yeah. Isn't it when it comes to Shiva? But Shringaram yeah. is Shringaram. Only thing you can see in Shringaram, there are some liberties you can take with someone whom you are in love with. Okay. So, uh, there is no harm in taking those liberties with someone. But the treatment of Krishna and Shiva should be different. Yeah, because at any point of time, the character of Shiva itself is such that he is not some somebody who can be. I mean, every everyone who loves him need not you know cannot relate to him as a lover, or he he is not achievable. Like how Krishna is like is like the boy next door. Everybody can uh, fantasize about him. So that perimeters have to be very clearly drawn when we are treating these two nayakas, isn't it? Yeah, that definitely, definitely, that has to be there. Mm. Ma'am, there is a question in chat by yeah. Dhruva Papacharya. Yeah, okay, I'm just seeing it. Could you please share your thoughts about choosing the Varnams for the male dancers? Okay, this is something um, I have been um, talking a lot to male dancers, even Uthiyo knows. Somehow, for me, you can say you are gender biased and all that, but for me, a male dancer doing a female Shingaram I, it's not okay for me. I feel it's not required. Okay. Either you select a bhakti piece or um, there are a lot of people who compose varnams these days. You can compose a varnam for a male shringaram. I think somebody has done it also. Uthyo, has somebody done that male shringara varnam? No, who's that? Uh, 
வெரி பர்சனல் லாட் ஆஃப் மேல் டான்சர்ஸ் டூயிங் ஃபீமேல் ஸ்ரிங்காரம் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ வைஷ்ணவ ஃபிலோசபி சேஸ் தட் எவ்ரி லிவிங் பீயிங் இஸ் ஃபீமேல் அண்ட் த ஓன்லி பரம புருஷா இஸ் லார்ட் ஹிம் செல்ஃப் ஸோ ஆல் த லிவிங் பீயிங்ஸ் வாண்ட் டு அட்டெயின் தேட் யூனியன் வித் பரமாத்மா ஸோ இஃப் யூ டேக் தட் கான்செப்ட் தட்ஸ் வை சி வென் யூ சி த போயட்ஸ் தேர் ஆல் மேல் போயட்ஸ் தே பிரிட்டன் ஃபிமன் ஷ்ரிங் ஷ்ரிங்காரம் ஓகே I mean, logically it's correct, you can do it, but somehow I feel it doesn't look good. That is my opinion. So, <laughs> I would advise my male students not to do a female Shingaram. A male Shingaram also has a lot of scope. You can do male Shingaram. Why? Male doesn't have Shingaram or what? Why should you do female Shingaram? So, if a male chooses a Varnam like Mohamana, suppose, So should yeah. the key word that they have to select because they are uh, they cannot choose the uh, Mohamana as a key word or something is that okay that they according to them say something else uh, you know that they can select as a male is no they okay? cannot select Mohamana if they want to be a male talking to a lord they can't select Mohamana Mohamana is a very female shrinkara then they have to do it like a female only if they select a, a female varnam like this they have to do it like a female longing for union with the lord you cannot do it in a bhakti mode making the male as a uh, words don't no. the words don't support it no you can't do it in a bhakti mode words somewhere don't say i somewhere i read uh, in an article where one artist has done mohamana like this um mm-hmm. so the uh, heroine or the jeevatma here is the earth mother earth and uh, uh, param I, uh, i wouldn't want to mention the artist name uh, okay. and uh, um, paramatma the shiva here is the uh, you can either call it as rain or uh, someone who protects the earth, nature so um, i mean um, interpretation interpreted that way yeah that's the left to the uh, dancer's uh, ability and skill to interpret it and hold the varnam uh, like that for the half an hour if they can do it then well and good mm-hmm. you can do it. yeah it's just that i am only talking about traditional varnams which is done in a traditional way there a lot of interpretations to the same traditional varnam it can be done i'm not saying it should not be done but for me personally a male doing a female shringaram doesn't go gel well with me and also um i feel when you're doing as an artist on stage you should always be aware that you're an artist don't get totally into the thing and start crying on stage and you know uh, those things are not okay you have to be aware that you're an artist performing you have to come back so when you're doing jati what will you do you get totally involved you do mokamana start crying and what will you do when you come how will you come out and do the jati how will you come out of the mood so it is very important to maintain the level of an artist and say that i am an artist performing you should be aware of uh, that you are an artist performing on stage even arti shastra says that it doesn't say um, get totally see that can happen when you are doing a dance drama and you are playing a particular part you are playing one role but in a regular uh, bharatanatyam margam it cannot happen you cannot get like that drenched in one and how will you come out if you get so intensely into one how can you come out it's impossible to come out then it's not okay anyway all this we are discussing is all my personal opinion it can vary from person to person anything else if there are no more questions ma'am i take this opportunity to thank you on behalf of everybody so kind of you you know it's 
sometimes when we have to pursue artists for quite a long time to bring them on but i was so fortunate that i just had one phone call with you thank you so much and apologies all my voice is very bad so i have no words to thank all of you who have participated in spite of the cricket finals that are happening thank you for what you do as important thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you thank you lavanya thank you, thank you for all the participants who have spent this one and a half hours with me and it was a wonderful uh, session akka thank you very much thank you lakshmi thank you thank you shobna ma'am very thank nice you. Thanks for Actually, I am not a dancer. My daughter is a Bharatanatyam artist. Mm -hmm. I can understand and follow what all you told. I can <laughs> explain to her. Very nice it was. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank, Thank, Thank you, Lavanya, for hosting me. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay. Namaskaram. Namaskaram, Shabakra. Oh, hi, Virushka. Namaskaram, Virushka. I didn't know you were here. How are you? I'm fine. How are you, Virushka? Uh -uh. Well, thanks. Thank you for a wonderful discussion. Thank you, Virushka. How come you never ask questions? I would have known if you, that you're here there. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, lots of questions, but uh, yeah, I'll save it and share it. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> but a beautiful that. varnam, really a beautiful varnam to have explored. And um, while I'm on, I'll just say one thing that. Uh, when it comes to Sanchari Baba and everybody on the group now are all senior dancers, I think it's lovely. It's just my thought also that we should be using our own experiences um, to elaborate on, you know, the line. There's so many things that all of us have experienced that it just creates it when we think, then it makes the Varnam also a lot more personal and that then the, the Varnam becomes a conversation that we're not just interpreting uh, a poet's um, words that he's written 5,000 years ago or whenever, but we're making it relevant um, and also having that personal connection with whoever's the Naika that we are emoting with at that time. That's that's true, uh, Virushka. And also, even when you're interpreting the Sancharis, as you say, your personal experience will have a big say in your interpretation. It will have Absolutely. your personal experience will affect your interpretation. That is why we say a dance it is very personal. It can never be structured. So even if the same Sanchari that I'm teaching you and you're doing it, your experience will bring it out in a different way. It will add a different color to that. Isn't it? I think, I think that's, that's if we all are going to be performing traditional Varnams, it's keeping the Varnam alive and us sharing those experiences make it make allows it to also have a contemporary feel. You don't have to do contemporary movements to change, but it's it's just adding our own flavor and our own emotion because it's still the the jatis and uh, everything else will still be having that resonance of coming from a traditional lineage. But it's also just for us personally, if we still wanting to perform varnams, that uh, why would it be impactful for us now if it's if it's our own? No, I didn't get you, Lam uh, Varishka. What did you say? Why would no, it I be? Say, uh, if we are still choosing to perform Varnams, then adding our own experiences with it or uh, in keeping with, obviously, the, the meaning of the line, then it makes it so significant to be performing and still composing with Varnams um, in this time, I know you also mentioned that people are not wanting to sit through long performances, but um, then it makes the Varnams a lot more relevant to us. Yeah, it does. Yeah, that's right. That's true. Yeah. But again, Virishka, the, as I'm always telling, art is a very personal experience, personal journey of a dancer. So uh, the same Varnam or same Padam, 
been taught to 10 different people should come out differently in 10 different ways. It cannot be the same. If it is the same, then the purpose is lost. It has to be different because what you process inside is your, the process happens with your experience, your personal experience of life. And that's what makes the process interesting. And each one will process it using their experience. So it will come out differently and it has to be different. That's when it is interesting. Art cannot be the same here. It just cannot be the same. It has to be different. It can be the same jatis, it can be the same ideas, it can be the same hands. But um, for example, when I'm doing a group class, I am teaching the same varnam, same hands and same. But I see the difference in each one. Uh, maybe it's a slight difference, but the difference is there. Unless you force them to do the way, a particular way, which I will not do. I don't want to do it. I feel that difference is beautiful. I think to close off, that was the most perfect statement of the whole one and a half hours <laughs> of everything being personal from what you mentioned about the different styles of Bharat Natyam or different uh, schools of Abhinaya, as well as our choice of um, different styles doing different Varnams. Um, it's all a personal experience and making dance relevant for ourselves first, that we have to look at it as conversation rather than anything else. And that's, yeah. Thank you for a beautiful discussion, Akka. Thank you, Virushka. Thank you, everyone, for this lovely evening. An evening well spent for me. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. See you soon. Bye. Good night. Namaskaram. Namaskaram.